How rich is your suit of programming tools? PHP programmers, what frameworks are you incorporating to enrich your programming experience? Welcome once again to Tech Mastery Hub with your guy, Oladeji. On today's episode, I'll be talking about um, Laravel Nova, one of the packages that comes with the framework Laravel, popularly known, you know, for PHP. What is Laravel Nova? Before we can understand the concept of um, what Laravel Nova is really is, let's remind ourselves what Laravel itself is. Laravel is a powerful PHP web application framework, as we all know, known for its expressive syntax. We have a couple of other um, PHP frameworks, but today we're focusing on Laravel. Now, along with Laravel comes a couple of um, you know, packages. We're looking at Laravel Nova, N-O-V-A. Laravel Nova is a premium administrative panel package. It's used to build admin panels when you're using Laravel for PHP, okay? So designing is, is designed specifically for Laravel applications, offering simplified and customizable interface for managing resources and creating back-end interface. So you are building a PHP application that is essentially for the back office, that's admin panel, the administrative end of your application. And Laravel has been your choice of framework. Laravel Nova here is one of those major tools that have been created to really enrich this experience. Why it is so are some of the things we'll be looking at here today. First, let's understand that um, for Laravel as a framework, there are a couple of other ecosystem packages. It's not limited to Nova. The people that created um, Laravel are the same people that created Nova. Okay, for this purpose, we'll be looking at. But quickly, let's look at um, a few other ecosystem packages that are meant to work with Laravel. We have the Voyager, which is also used to create the administrative end of um, Laravel. By that, I mean um, bread, browse, read, edit, add, and delete for the admin, you know, by my panel purpose creation. Backpack for Laravel is another such one. This essentially provides a tool for CRUD, C-R-U-D, for creating, reading, updating and deleting we have admin lte integration admin lte tool is also a popular open source admin dashboard and control panel templates that works with laravel okay it's also you know known for its uh, what do you call it it enhances um, the creation of custom admin panels in Laravel. Last but not the least, as I will mention, is Canvas, not Canva. Canvas. Canvas is a Laravel publishing platform. It's also one of the you know packages developed to work with Laravel. But unlike the others, this is mostly used by bloggers. Okay, now those are some of the other packages that comes with Laravel, but that's just for us to know that we are not limited to Nova. But while we're focusing on Nova today, we have understood basically what Nova will do. Let me rephrase it. As a PHP developer, there are a lot of things you could create, I know. But when we're talking about framework, these frameworks have been created to enrich our create our development experiences of which laravel is one of them now while we're dealing with laravel 
they are a web, you know, SaaS application and the rest. But now in an organization, you have maybe that package, that application that your customers or your clients use from outside. You have that, you know, that uh, portrays your sites, you know, or portal as you may choose to call it. But here, you now need that back office application. It's not that you can't build this afresh from Laravel or from raw PHP. But um, what we're talking about here is um, how can I hasten, enrich my experience when creating some of these things? Laravel Nova here, we create a back office for your business. We create that administrative system for your business. It has been customized to do this. Now, let's look at it once again. Laravel Nova is a commercial administrative panel developed by Laravel for simplifying the creation of backend interfaces within Laravel applications. It offers a customizable and rich platform to manage resources and administrative tasks eventually efficiently. The purpose of Laravel ecosystem in this case means it will serve as that specified toolkit within the Laravel ecosystem that provides an off-the-box solution to rapidly build and manage your administrative panels what we will call the back office that thing that happens in an e-commerce system orders have been made who handles the order the back office somebody in the back office is logging in to see the orders and quickly do the needful returns have been requested who handles its back office somebody in the back office is immediately notified when a request is made for a refund or a return and you know opens that back office application to quickly do what they need for in the back office panel too the staff that are managing that e-commerce system as a whole or the organization as a whole the employee records their salary accounts records the payroll system all these things belong to the back office Okay, so this is a tool that has been built for you just to enrich that experience. Just to make it faster, just to make it more efficient, just to make it more customizable, to enhance its integration, scalability, and it has a, a robust support and community you know, feature. Those are the benefits of using Laravel Nova. Once again, I'll quickly brush through the about the benefits efficiency when we talk about speeds of development process by the time you are you know creating everything from scratch with your php or your laravel you are burning a tangible number of time laravel nova they have built a couple of things for you already you now with a single run of a script tagging along your database a whole form is created for you. Just add up the fields, for example, the, the menu links, everything comes automatically. Your crowd experience to create button, to update, to edit, everything comes automatically. Just imagine, rather than you still needing to write that function, you know, for create, for edit, so that is what we mean when we say efficiency. It's customizable. You customize it to your specific needs. Of course, like most um, other applications should be. Integration, seamless integration with Laravel. Leveraging its ecosystem and features. Scalability. But one important thing we should note here is Laravel Nova is that package that has been built that comes with a price. The license is not free. Of course, look at the rich features that have been you know, built in for you. 
it is not free. You will pay something for it. But trust me, it is worth it. Now I'm going to take you through briefly what Laravel Nova looks like when we're using it to build an application. I will take you through what Laravel Nova you know, file structures look like. I'll take you through what its code looks like so that we'll see it richly. You're welcome to join me and enjoy this. So now I will share my screen and to show you how Laravel Nova works. Okay, now this is an application I have running already, um, but let's start um, with my folder. My folder where I have the entire application. As a Laravel user, this is not going to be too strange to you. So it's from this, you know, that I'm opening my code up in um, Visual Studio. Okay. I'm using Visual Studio code. Now, so let's go back to Visual Studio code now. This is my application as a whole. And um, as we can see, it's not too far from what you are used to using Laravel. But remember, like we said, since it's just a package of Laravel, now let's see the differentiation in um, some of the structures and the code structures. Okay, so first things first, um, when you have a package, let's say, like, I want to assume already you have a Laravel running on your system. There are a few requirements that are required for Nova to work. First, ensure you have made payments and got your license. And um, next, we need the installation of the Nova itself using Composer, which will... Um, you'll see how some of those things are done, you know, very shortly. Okay, so let's just go on now. Uh, look at, um, let's take a look at it. I wanted to look at the structure of everything, the way it goes. On the left-hand panel, let's take a look at the structures typical of our Laravel application. Okay. Now, haven't seen all this. We will take a look at the website, but we need to take a look at some configuration files, okay? Now, remember the first thing we just did is um, we installed, you know, we showed the codes that are meant to install some of these things, okay? And haven't shown them, our configuration file here is what we, you know, need to adjust as they need be. This app.php, okay? If app.php is in place, um, through Composer, we have installed what we just installed. Now, we may also need to do this. Okay, using PHP Artisan. Okay. So, this installs the Nova package onto our Laravel application. Okay, now, but since I have one running, there's no need to actually execute that code. Now, we'll see more of this, but let's go to the websites of Nova and see how the whole thing is um, made. Now, this is the website of Nova um, at nova.laravel.com. Okay, here is the documentation page. And um, as a whole, it's not too bogus it's not too voluminous the documentation i mean so from the basic things we need is um the installation of course looking at the requirements then we see the resources you know the basic how to work with the fields the date fields 
the file fields validation authentication working with the searches filter lenses actions and all such things are well documented but trust me they are easier than you can even imagine now let's look at the requirements to run laravel nova the requirement the basic requirements first you need a composer running on your system as of course you should expect okay now a laravel framework should be running on your system minimum version 8 okay laravel 8 and um we have a um, laravel mix that will be required six will be specific on the minimum and node.js should be there too and npm okay now for the browsers apple safari google chrome edge and mozilla are the required um browsers that support um, nova as at the time of this um video okay so looking through the entire thing you know it's just as basic as um a line of command most of the time you know to put things in place so just look at and see like i said earlier for example look at our php artisan nova to install you know this command simply installs you know your nova package onto your laravel and of course migration is nothing different from um, what we have as usual in um, laravel okay and just look through i will drop the link to this um documentation in the description so you can look through it at your own pace now look at the basic resources basic resources here could be talking about our form for example this is the user module the user interface okay where we set up users of our applications now look at most of the things you could do here the sweet thing about laravel nova is you're not even coding all this okay from the index page just look let me zoom in a bit from the index page that we're seeing the listing you not know, to the um, edits delete all those things are there for you and to create this user page now your table the, your user table is among the tables that is already migrated fine a line of code will create what you are seeing here right now of course except your records a line of code we create this as you will see in the documentation okay yeah i'm trying to say we crossed that line of code earlier well maybe we'll still come across it again okay and um it's all you need to run this and your view your edit your delete your index page your search everything is there so going forward now, if you click create user and just create everything it says, it's going to be created. The record will be created. You have your filter, everything by default. That is why they, I said they have finished the work for you. All you have to do left on this is probably, okay, I have an additional field that is not here and all such things or who could see this or that, you know, and all that. Now, that's basically how the resources work now the fields you know, of course we have different field types and the format of how you handle them you know you will find in this resource you no know, text field image field and all such things they differ in the handling but very basic codes the searches the global searches and the basic searches what is the difference between a basic search and a global search let's quickly take a look here again now on the module you have this search that will look strictly be within your user application that's the basic search okay while at the top uh, let's okay here is a basic search here yeah? it's going to look within your user specifically but the top here is the global search that will look through the entire application all these things you are not writing any lengthy code you are just set setting perhaps what should be sought when you search from there which fields should be sought that's the only thing you are setting similarly with your filter and um of course your lenses 
and actions such that when you select a, a user an action can be applied to that user okay that is what we're talking about um right there the sweetness of um and efficiency of um laravel nova everything is well documented and the documentation are you know, very easy now look at the dashboard okay this is an example of a user insights dashboard and trust me a line of a code will create this dashboard for you yeah you heard me right a line of a code will create this dashboard for you okay so now let's proceed and move on okay yeah. if you're saying it this is all the line of code that created that dashboard we just saw right now yes that is laravel nova for you that is it in in such manner you can now add extra dashboards or insights as you may require okay now moving on look at other things you could you know just dig through within the documentation so having seen all this now i think um let's go through you know some other stuff and of course don't forget you can see the main page you know outside the documentation to see more of the the cost and all such since we're not advertising for them there's no need to show their pricing and all that okay now back to our code the nova.php in the config file is one of those things you need to you know set at the early stage you come on here you make your settings as maybe now trust me all these pages um, these config pages are coming up automatically the moment you install that laravel stuff okay now it's just a few configuration as you know not something alien to the typical framework usages just come back and set up um, you know the, your defaults yeah <clears throat> that's what we do in the config files okay but of essence is our dot env file now close this and um so that we'll see the file structure on the left hand side here and you can see the file structure of course a couple of them from the package that json and all such are not different from what we have in our typical um laravel application okay and um just look through but our dot env file where we make the settings now let's take a look at um an example of the dot env file okay yeah that's an example showing on the page but another differentiation here is um you see we have the storage we have the resources we have the public you know, folder structure and config um the databases where we have our migrations and all that all those are the same with what you're used to in laravel ordinarily where the difference lies a bit is while in laravel most times you put your files um, or your um, views under resources in my in my own case here i'm putting everything under app as we will see okay now here we define in our dot env file the necessary things from the db the app configurations um Okay, the sessions you know um, if you're using media library in my case i'm using local but if you're using say the aws s3 bucket you may define that you know as s3 okay if you're using redis you define a configuration of redis as necessary um, your mail server configuration okay um, if you're using your company mail for example it could be mail dot your company name dot you know, com and default other configurations follows as necessary and every other such um, configuration as you may need now that is our dot env file that sets the tone of everything the environment linking up with the database 
Okay. So I will take an example of just a model within the whole package, which is the employee model. The interface, the model, you know, like what we have here, for example, talking about, you know, this page. Oh, let's go up and look at the other one here. Here where we're looking at the users, this is an interface. This is the user's interface where users are managed from the listing to, you know, opening a particular record to editing. I will call this our resource page. So in our case here for employee, this is the resource page code. This is that interface code. Okay. We have others, other modules. Okay. And um, hey, look at the structure of the file here. Collapse from app, from app folder. We we'll go to Nova, and under Nova, we we'll find you know our resource code, you know, for the pages. Here we are looking at that employee zone, and from app Nova, we we'll open employee.php. Yeah, this is what deals with the interface the fields and everything we see visibly this is where that code is handled from now why we know that um you know we use this use that to in you know bring in the resources into our typical laravel pages there are a few other things of notes when dealing with a page like this okay look at here you know available in navigation this is where we set who is able to see this module which user is able to see this module in the menu you know path of the application will this be the, this employee module will it be available in the menu for these applications no this is where we set it now here we set the group the menu group under where you know that comes up we set um the model we are attaching this to right now we move on and um you know the title can be defined as you want it so that when a record is opened is it the name the full name of the applicant um, 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 of the user that we see or the employee you know you can set it here and you know even differentiate it for each user okay and um we have what we call the index query function by default all your records comes up when you open that model but from the index query, you can define which user sees what record by alter, you know, by putting the um, some queries, the where conditions, and all that in um, the queries that comes out by default. That is one. Now related um, searches, as you can see, all those search stuff comes up by default here. Yeah, like I said. But related tables that has to do with employee, for example, if you are saying employee department, maybe in the employee record, in the employee table, is department ID we have. So you want to search by department name. When you type the department name, there's already a relationship, you know, to the employee table. That's when we search by relationship, okay? It's a bit different from searching directly, which is just picking which fields we want to search with on our basic search. By default, is the ID, you know, that comes. You just add your other searchable fields, okay? And um, those are the uh, these are the other functions we have on our main resource page. So now, looking at the fields can see we can define from text and all such other things yeah this is the structure of the fields this is how we define each field toggle files text dates you know a differentiation from one to the other this is where we define them from this is where and how just look at this text field for example it's as simple as this for a specific text. And mind you, what I highlighted there is, you know, carrying some other condition. For example, who can see this field? Look at, can see. You define the users. So if we say, 
ABC users can see this module, but among this ABC, one or two cannot see this field. You know, that's they can't see. Many other such things. Just look through the code I'm showing you here. Okay, like we define our cards here. That's apart from the fields. We can define what we filter with here and who can filter what. Define our lenses and our actions. For example, we want to select and generate salary. But who can also do it can be defined here. All these are the type of things we call them um, actions. So that is our employee resources page. Other things comes with it. In hand in hand, other models that come with it are the ones we'll look at, starting with um the model. Of course, we know that um our model is what points and defines a lot of things about our database. So if we go to app, okay, look at the structure again. Your model is usually in model folder here, but in this case, it's underneath the app directly. So we can set which um, database table we are relating this model to. We're using um, the media library. We define it here for each media library so that it can be registered in the model table as necessary. Here we define, you know, our constants that we'll use within the body. We define our casts and fillables. Cast for the dates, you know, just to have a, a good format. And the fillables, as we may want them, then we define the relationship with other modules or other tables from the model. So as we're working with the resources, we have the model to go with it. We also have what we call the, um, the the policy. So in our case, the employee policy. And what is the employee policy in this case? As the name implies, a policy is just that place where you outrightly define who can see. Earlier in the in, um, um, available navigation on the resource page, we say who will see on the menu, but here, who has access at all to the application is what we're defining not just about in the menu. So we define the users that have access to a specific application, the users that can create or modify or soft delete or force delete, you know, or restore what was deleted. Those are the things we do under policy, just as its name implies. Now we also have what we call the observer. The observer deals with saving of our records by default, even if you don't come here, when you click update, that record is updated or save, it is saved or delete, it is deleted. But in the observer, we define what happens in the process of saving a new record or an existing record or immediately after we do it. I'll give you examples. But before then, there are six basic um basic types of um functions we'll look at under here so that we have a good understanding of what we do under observer okay let's say let me put them down in a way here one minute yeah okay let's go i'll put them side by side so that i can explain them properly Okay, creating is a function. Let's put that beside um, um, what I'll call um, created, another function. And put that beside um, saving. Okay, and put that beside um, created, MMC, saved. Okay. Then I'll put that beside um, updating and finally updated. Okay, I'm just writing here now, but uh, these are the six common functions we deal with on the observer. What is the difference? When we are dealing with the saving or saved, it's about, I mean, I'm sorry, the creating or created is about a new record we are creating or that we just created. 
whereas the updating or updated is about an existing record that we are modifying and finally the save or saving the saved or saving is about both so a situation that applies both to this new record being created or the old record being modified can be put under saving or saved now what's the difference between each pair when we say saving I mean, updated and updating or created and creating the difference here is simply that when you are still creating maybe something needs to be looked up such a code is written under creating whereas created is that place you write your code when you want the record to be saved first then an action to be taken for example immediately we create this record send a message or create a task for a user a specific user in a specific department so that they take the next action it's under created when it is saving or saved it's applicable to either of the two that means anytime i make a new record or save changes to an existing record just send an email to notify a specific user such can be put under saving or saved as the case may be under updating that means it's not applicable to a new record it's strictly for an existing record so there are situations where we are putting our logic in place and we just need to differentiate them that is where all this comes in place now let's take a quick glimpse at saving for example you know you could while saving a record create a task for another department or another user so that they take specific action that is what um, our observer file does so all these four files work hand in hand when you are working on building a laravel nova application you will often come to this four for each module you will have something to do with each of these four apart from the other places so with the explanation i've given this on this form you will know where to go per situation when dealing with this basically this is laravel nova so guys there we have it that is um laravel nova for you that's um what it can do it's something that you can take advantage of it's one of those applications i have really really enjoyed using both to build for my own you know work system and for clients while you have enjoyed this video with me i welcome you once again to subscribe to this channel to like it and to share with friends don't forget that tech mastery hub here is that code crafts channel where we share the basic things that are not often talked about when it comes to techies especially for programmers and data analysts thank you once again for joining me see you next time